Hi everyone, I'm the Limitless Librarian and this is my June 2024 reading wrap up. I'm afraid I've had a bit of a sloppy month this week, both in terms of video output and also reading. I hit a bit of a reading slump and was also frazzled by final uni assignments and exams. So I'm terribly sorry about that content wise. We've got 10 books read this month and as per the usual procedure, I will be ranking them from worst to best. So at number 10, we have The Chemistry of Tears by Peter Carey. Uh, this one I was really keen for and really excited for. It had a really strong start, but it really disappointed me. Uh, this is a story that kind of switches between two perspectives, the modern perspective and a historical perspective. And it centers around the reconstruction of an elaborate automaton, uh, a mechanical swan and um, that re is really interesting to me. I really like steampunk and I think automatons in general are interesting. They really did exist. Uh, I, I believe this is one is based on a real machine that existed. But unfortunately it was disappointed me because the story was confusing and it didn't really seem to have much of a point and the characters were just unlikable. So unfortunately that's disappointed me. Number nine is Miniature Final Fantasy. This is a collection of photographs based on the Final Fantasy games made in miniature using household objects, using them to recreate scenes from the games. And some of them are pretty creative. Um, I liked this one. Um, which is using a hair clip to recreate a Marlboro from, um, the, which is an enemy from the games. I thought that was creative, and I instantly recognised it as what what it was supposed to be. But some of them are a bit obtuse. Um, they do look like a bit of a stretch, especially since on the following pages it does show you the scene from the game that it's trying to recreate. So I think some of them are a bit of a stretch, but I think it, it's charming enough. I was just expecting a little bit more, I guess. Number eight is We Are the Beaker Girls by Jacqueline Wilson. This is the fifth book in her Tracy Beaker series, the second of the time skip ones, um, featuring adult Tracy Beaker and her daughter Jess. And I thought this one was pretty good. It was definitely less frustrating than the last one, which was My Mum, Tracy Beaker. In this one, they meet another uh, child who was um, in the foster system and who ran away, and that was interesting to see. So, yeah, I, I like this one. I just don't have much else to say about it, I guess. Number seven is the Olympus Academy Trilogy by Eliza Rain. This is an omnibus edition that contains all three books, The Titan's Treasure, The Demon Demigod, and The Jinx Journey. I have already filmed a review of this, but I have to edit it and upload it. So hopefully they'll be up in the next few days. Uh, so this is, um, I describe it as Percy Jackson meets House of Night. It's a Greek mythology based YA trilogy. I set in a school for demigods and other Greek mythological beings. And I wasn't really expecting it to be the height of literature and it wasn't. It was kind of what I expected. It didn't really use the mythology to its fullest extent. The world building was a bit strange and the characters were a bit tropey. You know, you had your misunderstood girl protagonist, your moody bad boy, boyfriend to be, your girl bestie, ride or die roommate, your weirdly spiteful bully for no reason, pretty girl. You know, it had all the tropes. It was fun to read. Um, but I think I would just wish it could have used mythology to its full potential and really had you know, had more monsters, more gods, more references to mythology rather than just that being an excuse for everyone to have powers and be in this place together, basically. Number six is Horrible Histories, Rowdy Revolutions by Terry Deary. The Horrible History series are a series of um, fun history books for kids going through 
wacky, gross, gory, quirky history facts or just going through history from a more more fun and entertaining lens. And this was a good one. It was an interesting one. It focused on various revolutions, both successful and not, throughout history and what went right and what went wrong. And, yeah, it was just fun and interesting. And it kind of went through everything in chronological order. It had cartoons and quirky ways of formatting information. Yeah, it was pretty much what I expected from a horrible histories book. It's great. Number five is Barney the Horse by Michael Morpurgo. This was a lovely little uh, set of stories um, based on this charity called Fa- Farms for City Children, I think it's called, that Morpurgo was involved in and uh, an experience in which actually inspired his book War Horse, um, which I've reviewed. Um, but I digress. So this is sort of three short stories featuring children and animals. Uh, my favourite one was the second one about a boy who rescues an injured bird and um, nurses it back to health so it can rejoin its family when it is ready to fly. I liked that one. Um, the the teacher story about Barney the horse is actually pretty good too. That was a lovely story. The first story is about a boy who like finds a lost sheep. That one wasn't as good or interesting but... Yeah, the stories were great. The one thing I will say, though, is that the illustrations in this book was a really weird style, especially the people. Uh, maybe this is because I'm currently playing through the video game Danganronpa V3, and there's a character in there that's drawn really cartoonishly named Ryoma Hoshi, and all the pictures of the people in this book remind me of him, and it's really weird and kind of uncanny. A little, like, creepy? I, I don't know. Something about the pictures in this book, in this book bothered me. But partly because of that. But aside from that, the stories themselves are fine and uh, really nice. And I liked the history behind them because I think they are based on real things that happened on these farms for city children, like, excursions or trips. Number four is Paddington at Large, which is the fifth Paddington Bear book. This one was pretty good. It's not my favourite. There was one story at the start where Paddington had this encounter with a policeman and it kind of bothered me because I think he acted a bit out of character. But aside from that, the stories in this one were pretty great. I like the Christmas pantomime story in this one. I think that was the best story in this book. But yeah, you can't really go wrong with Paddington Bear, but... That one first story that was a bit out of character did bother me a bit. Number three is The Bangers and Chips Explosion by, I have no idea how to pronounce this name, Broff or Brow Girling. Uh, no idea. Um, uh, this was a fun book, but the first half was significantly better than the uh, second half. It was a very funny, witty, humorous book about these um, crooks that get hired uh, as cooks in a school kitchen uh, cooking food for the kids and things get chaotic as the cooks slash crooks think there's some kind of secret operation that they've been hired to do and they've got to find out what's going on sooner or later but then things go south from there but yeah I just I love the first half of this book but the second half the second half was still good but yeah it just wasn't as strong and funny as the first half. I was expecting a little bit more kookiness throughout the whole book. But I still think it was a lot of fun. Number two is Paddington Marches On, which is the sixth Paddington Bear book. And this one I liked better than uh, Paddington at Large because I think the stories in this one were better and just more memorable. This one where he goes to a marmalade factory to do a ceremony. It's one where he tries to do Mr. Curry's plumbing and floods his house. There's another one where he tries to sweep the chimney. Uh, and there was the last one, which I won't spoil. You should read that for yourself. But yeah, this one just had better stories and was a really great book. And the last one, the best book I read in June was Shadowhunters and Downworlders, a Mortal Instruments reader, which is a collection of essays about Cassandra Clare's uh, Mortal Instruments books 
And this was just really fun and nice to read and sort of think about these books and characters in different ways and different angles. I especially like the essays discussing Simon because he's one of my favourite characters. And yeah, it was just a, a great collection really. I do wish I had more on the Infernal Devices as well because they were out when this was written and it was referenced a bit by like one of the authors in this. But yeah, I like I like their perspectives and uh, thoughts discussed in these essays. So I think any Shadowhunters fan would really like this. Also let me know if you'd like me to do some videos on Shadowhunters content, whether it's themed book recommendations or uh, in just discussing the reading order, because that could be a bit complicated for some people. Yeah, let, let me know if you'd like to see some Shadowhunters content. But anyway, that's uh, it for my June 2024 wrap up. So apologies for the lack of content this month and the lack of books read. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more bookish content. And as always, do lots of maths, read lots of books, and I'm sure you'll have a wonderful day.